Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Liz. In today's video, we are gonna do some Magnolia Home and Joanna Gaines inspirational DIYs, not necessarily dupes. I try my best to recreate them as close as I possibly can, but I wanted to throw my own little twist onto them as well. My last Joanna Gaines dupe video was super popular, so I wanted to bring some more back, give you guys some more inspirational DIYs from Magnolia Home. I went on their website, I went on their Instagram and Joanna's Instagram and tried to find some pieces that really spoke to me. And so I want to show you what I found and what I created. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. One thing I noticed when going on Joanna's website and to her Instagram into the Magnolia Home Instagram, there are so many different kind of candlesticks and they come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. And I thought that they were so much fun. I wanna show you how I created my very own candlesticks using wood pieces from Hobby Lobby. For this first DIY, I found these candle holders on the Magnolia website and I thought these were super adorable and I loved the big bottoms that they had to them. So I'm gonna start off with these Dollar Tree Christmas cloches. I thought these would be perfect because I'm going to use just the bottom on two of them. So I also found all of these wood pieces at my local Hobby Lobby. I found some candlestick holders, and finials, all sorts of different kind of pieces. And I'm gonna show you here all the pieces you're gonna need. Now, with my cloche bottoms, they have this little dip at the top or technically it's at the bottom, but I need my candlestick holders to be able to fit over that so they will sit flush. So I did drill some holes in them. If you aren't using these exact pieces, it's not gonna be a big deal but just for my case, I did have to drill some holes to allow those to fit onto my bottom pieces. Now for this finial, I did end up cutting it down on both the top and the bottom. You can see on the right side, that's what it normally looks like. And then the left one is the one that I'm gonna be using just to make it so that I can fit my pieces together better. And then lastly, one of these big finials that you can pick up at Hobby Lobby, all of this in the wood section. So. For my first candlestick, it's going to be these three pieces, two candlestick holders, and then the mini-sized finial where I ended up cutting the top and bottom. So it's going to look like this. I'm going to start out with some gel super glue, and I'm going to put that right into that drilled hole that I made, and then also onto the candlestick bottom. And then I'm just going to insert that right into my little bottom piece right in the middle and then I'm going to add some hot glue to the inside of the candle holder and then I'm going to insert my finial and then I'll add some more hot glue to my last candlestick and then I'm just going to place it right on top of the finial. So this is what you're gonna be left with. I'm just gonna set this to the side to finish drawing and curing and we'll move on to my second candlestick. So what I ended up doing was taking the kind of plant pot looking wood piece and this other finial and I glued the bottom of, I'm just gonna call it the plant piece, <laughs> the plant holder to the top of that other finial. So it's gonna look just like this and I just filled it with hot glue because it does have a hole in the bottom and that's what's gonna attach the two pieces together. Now I ended up accidentally breaking my second cloche bottom so if you don't do that, you can completely skip this step, but I just grabbed a scrap piece of wood that I had that was in the shape of a circle, and I'm just going to super glue that down to the bottom so that it will cover up that hole in the bottom of my cloche. Now I'm gonna add some hot glue into the top part of that other finial into the middle, and then I'm just gonna add my largest finial with the round portion. It's just gonna go straight into that hole where all the hot glue is, and I'm just gonna set that up to dry, 
And then once that's all stable, I'm gonna add some super glue to the bottom of my candlestick, add it to the bottom of my cloche, and that's it for that one. And then I will take them outside and spray paint them, and I just use this Krylon Chalky Finish Anvil Gray. Gave them a good couple of coats, and this is what they look like. I thought that these turned out super, super cute. I just put some Dollar Tree candles on top of them, and I thought they were absolutely adorable sitting on a shelf in my living room. For this DIY, I found this folded wall pocket on Magnolia's website and I had seen this quite a while ago and knew that I wanted to try remaking it and I finally was able to get around to doing that. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I found some of their faux leather in the big rolls, uh, not you know their folded rolls but in their big round rolls. <laughs> I found some of that. I purchased, I believe, a half of a yard of it and it cost me $5. So I am going to just measure out the amount of this faux leather that I need. Now you could use a thicker material, but this is the thickest that I could find. And I think it worked just fine, but I do think that if you found something even thicker, that would be even better. I'm just gonna start cutting the faux leather down to the size that I want. I honestly didn't go by any certain measurements. I just kind of eyeballed it all. So I just started out with my main back piece. And then I'm going to start measuring out the piece that's going to go on the front. And all I did was measure out how wide the back piece was. And then I added some length onto the bottom because I wanted it to be able to fold around the bottom and, and glue to the back. Hopefully that's making sense. You can see what I'm doing here, but it will all come together and you'll be able to see how I do it in just a second. So I'm going to get all that cut out. Now I have my bottom piece on the bottom or my back piece and the top piece on the top. And at first I took some clips to try to hold this all together. And in the end, it's easier if you glue it first. And I just went around with some super glue and just did a couple little dots here and there just to make sure that everything would stay in place. And when I go to punch my holes, the holes are going to be perfectly aligned. So I just measured in about a half of an inch from each side, starting at the very bottom and working my way up to the top of the flap. And you're going to want to make it sure that it's from the bottom of the back piece, not the bottom of the top piece. Because remember, we are going to fold that up and underneath to create that fold. Now, I just measured an inch and a quarter six times. So every inch and a quarter, I did a little dot and I did six of those per side. So you can see here, I went in with some super glue on both sides just to make sure that everything stayed in place because when I did go through to punch my holes, they were starting to become unaligned. So after that glue was dried, I'm gonna take my crocodile tool and I'm gonna start hole punching holes into each side where I marked the dots with my pen. I would have some of the pieces hanging on just by a thread so it really wasn't a big deal. I just had to take my knife and cut those threads um, but this it worked great. It, like I said it didn't cut all the way through. If you can think of a better tool to do this I was gonna try a hole punch but I only had one from the Dollar Tree and I figured my crocodile tool would be much better than that so Maybe I just don't know enough about cutting holes into material, uh, but if you know of a better tool, please let me know in the comments down below. Honestly, this project was a lot of just winging it and trying to figure it out. I didn't have a method to my madness. I just kept going with it until, you know, it turned out. So the next thing I'm going to do is add some super glue to my back piece and I'm going to fold it over to attach to the back.
Now the next thing I did is I grabbed some of this suede cord and I thought this was really fun. Now in the picture, the knots are in the back of the wall pocket, but I honestly prefer the knots to be in the front. I just like that, you know, chunky knot kind of look. So I'm going to start by inserting my suede cord through the bottom to the top so that my knot will be in the top and then I'm just going to go up and down and up and down into each hole and at the very end my cord will come back up and I can tie a second knot on that side and then I'll just cut off the excess suede cord and then I'll just do the exact same thing to the other one bringing my cord up tying a knot and then going over to the next hole, bringing that one up, and then going down and up and down and up, tying a knot and cutting off the excess cord. That's all you have to do for the sides. It's really, really easy. You can use whatever kind of color that you want, or maybe you wanna use a different kind of cord or yarn or string. Whatever your heart desires, some lace would be really cute. And then for the hole at the top, again, I just used my crocodile tool to punch out a hole in the middle. And then I used some more suede cord to tie on a hanger. And then I just put in some florals that I picked up in the fall section, I believe at Michael's. And that's it. That's all you got to do for this one. I thought this was really, really cute. You could make this as big as you want or you could make little mini ones. For the amount of leather that I used, I probably spent maybe a dollar on this project two dollars tops and I just think it turned out absolutely adorable so here is the finished product So excited to talk about our sponsor today, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of amazing classes for creative minds like yours. They have classes such as watercolor paintings, the basics of line drawing, social media classes even, and so much more. They even have cookie decorating classes. So I found this cookie decorating for beginners by Lori Shannon. She is so much fun to watch. Plus, who doesn't love cookies? I know I do. You can learn how to decorate them, make beautiful cookies, and show them off to your friends and your neighbors. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, so there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. When you join, you can also try one of Skillshare's live classes, work along other members, and connect with teachers in real time. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your own creativity today. Thank you so much again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and let's jump into our next DIY. So I was browsing the Magnolia Instagram page and I came across this beautiful cutting board. I just thought this was so cute. I loved the white with the navy stripes on them. So I knew I wanted to create something similar to that. And a couple weeks ago, I found this cutting board at Goodwill. It was $6.49, so a little bit on the pricier side for a thrifted item, but I still thought it was really, really fun. And I decided that I could make this a double-sided cutting board. One side does have kind of a tile piece on it, but I thought it would be fun to try to cover that up in a different project. So first, I'm just going to start by using my heat gun to get all of the sticky stickers off. And I also use some alcohol to get all that sticky residue off as well. I'm going to go in with my Dixie Bell chalk paint in fluff, which I have been absolutely loving. And I'm going to give this two good coats to cover up the entire black cutting board front and back and sides. 
Next, I'm going to take some painter's tape and I'm just going to start by placing it down so that I make stripes on the cutting board. I'm going to do one towards the top and then one towards the bottom. Now, I didn't want to make this one exactly the same as the one in the picture. I kind of wanted to change it up a little bit. So first, I'm going to do these two large stripes and I'm going to go in with the Dixie Belle Yankee Blue Paint to paint in those stripes. I love this color. It's a really pretty grayish blue I just think it's absolutely gorgeous so I use that to paint in those and then once I've got those painted I'm gonna remove the painters tape and then I'm gonna go back in with some more painters tape and I'm going to make smaller lines just below each of our first two lines. I'm going to paint them with that same Yankee Blue chalk paint and remove the painter's tape from that and that's all you got to do. I thought this turned out really really beautiful. I'm loving the stripes on there. I paired it with one of my craft kits from my website, put them together, made it look, you know, set it up all cute. I thought it was adorable <laughs> and put it in my kitchen and that's it. This one turned out really, really pretty and it's one of my favorites. This one is really, really simple. Again, went on the Magnolia Instagram page and came across this picture of these concrete and glass candle holders. I thought these were beautiful and I knew I had exactly what I needed to create this project. So I grabbed this concrete bottom that came from the Dollar Tree. It had a wire top to it or a metal ring top to it. I just took that off and then I also had one of these glass pieces from the Dollar Tree. All I'm going to do is take my gel super glue, put it on the inside of that concrete bottom. The glass didn't fit quite perfectly so I wanted to make sure that this was going to stay stuck down and sturdy. I just put it right on top, put a candle on the bottom, stuck it on a shelf in my living room, and that's it. $2 for this DIY and I think it's so simple and cute. One thing I love about Joanna Gaines' style taste is that she has so many different elements. She's got her metal decor and her wood decor. She's got yarns and cottons and just so many natural pieces to it. And I just love the way that it looks all together. This next DIY is going to show you a piece that you can make just using some nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, some white cotton nautical rope. And I think it turned out gorgeous. So let's go ahead and jump into that one. So on the magnolia website i found these white cotton storage baskets i thought that these were super pretty and i knew that i could make these just by using some dollar tree products so i picked up a pack and a half of the white nautical rope from the dollar tree and i'm just gonna start by hot gluing the end and starting to wrap the rope around itself you're just going to add hot glue and continue to wrap it until you get it as big as you like it now I'm going to use a container of sand to help me as a guide for this so that I can get everything nice and even. So once I have the bottom as big as I want it, I'm going to set the container of sand down on top and then I'm just going to continue hot gluing all around the sand container and I make sure to twist my container every time that I add hot glue and put the rope around it just so that the hot glue doesn't stick to the container and I just keep doing this until I get all the way finished with this line of rope and then I'm going to start on my second pack and I just keep hot gluing until I get it as tall as I want it. Now when I get to the top all I'm going to do is cut off the excess rope. Make sure that there's enough to add a little handle. I'm going to hot glue the end of the rope to the side of the rope as you can see and just making that little handle right there. Now 
In the picture on the Magnolia website, there wasn't a strip of leather around the basket itself. And because I had to use multiple pieces of rope, I did have that seam there and I wanted that to be covered up. So I figured I could make this match the handle with the leather around the handle. And I just grabbed some brown leather that I had from Cricut and I'm just going to cut out a piece that's long enough to wrap around the middle of my basket and then a big enough piece to wrap around the handle. So I'm just going to use some hot glue to attach my leather and I'm just going to cover up that seam where the two ends of rope meet and then I'm just going to hot glue that all around my basket. And then I'll take the other piece of leather and I'm just going to hot glue that around the bottom portion of my handle. And that's it for this one. You could decorate this in any way that you want. Fill it with whatever you want. I put some magnolia flowers in mine and set it on a shelf. And this is the way it turned out. When you're trying to decorate your home and you're looking for inspiration online, one thing that I like to do is go through, find my inspiration, and then head to my local Goodwill. There are so many pieces on there that can definitely be used as Magnolia Home DIYs, especially if you're looking for metal pieces, metal trays, metal candlesticks, or glass candlesticks. There are just, there's so many DIYs out there. So I found this metal tray. Let me show you what I did with it. For this DIY, I found this metal wire tray on Magnolia's website. It was $52 and I knew I had something similar to this in my thrifted stash already. Now in this one, they have a completely, you know, solid metal bottom. What I had was this metal wire tray that still had that wire on the bottom, but I thought that that was fine and it worked perfect for this DIY. I only paid $1.49 for this piece. All I had to do was take it into my backyard. I spray painted it with the Krylon gray chalky spray paint that we used in our first project. And then once that was dry, I brought it inside and I'm going to take two different colors of gray paint. I'm going to use a darker one and a lighter one. The first thing I'm going to do is grab a natural sponge. I'm going to dip it into my darker gray and I'm just going to start dabbing it all over the entire piece. You want to make sure you get the front, the back, the sides, everything. Obviously, you don't want to cover the black up completely because you still want some of that black to come through. So I'm going for a galvanized look to this tray. So I'm just going to make sure I cover everything in my dark gray once everything is completely covered in that darker gray, I'm going to do the exact same thing with my lighter gray. Going over the entire thing, just up and down, dabbing motions everywhere you see fit. Once you're done with that, you can go back through and kind of, you know, fix spots here and there where you feel like there's too much light gray, too much dark gray. Just kind of eyeball it and really there's no method to it. You just dab the paint on until you feel like it looks good. At least that's what I do. And that's all I had to do with this one. I paired it with some books. Joanna is always adding books to her decor. You can see them all over the house. And in all of her pictures on Instagram, there's always some books somewhere. So some books and some lamb's ear and a beaded garland on my table in my hallway and this is how it turned out. That's it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know what your favorite DIY was in the comments down below. If you guys are new and you don't know, I have my very own website where I make and sell wood craft kits. If that's something that you're interested in, check my description box down below and you can shop my craft kits and keep an eye out for the first week of August. 
I will be starting my seasonal and holiday craft kit releases starting the first week of August. We have fall and Halloween, Thanksgiving, winter, Christmas. So many fun things are coming, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Don't forget to subscribe before you guys leave. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!